Miami, 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 Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Heapy Podcast. I'm your host, Ron Carlo Navas, and with me today. On the bottom of the screen here on twitch.tv slash MIHeatBeat is our producer and co-founder, Brian Gwentz. really like Jack Jacket. The Jack Jacket. <laughs> Flawless start to the show. On the bottom bottom left-hand corner, you can see our trash tweeter, Jack Alfonso. What's up? It was a $1 jacket. $1. If you can believe I that. Paid, I paid more for coffee than you did for a suit. That's incredible. That's right. Listen. Mr. Expensive. Deals. Uh, on the left-hand side of me, you can see our Heat Twitter president, Alf. What are we drinking? You have something in the cup. Nothing. I don't drink on non-game days. <laughs> you keep, uh, it's like, it's like, uh, Kawhi not practicing. You know, you gotta, you gotta stay ready. Uh, exactly. load management. I have to do something about this liver. It needs a day off. <laughs> Listen, I don't blame you. Uh, by the way, that that voice, Alf, uh, that you hear if you're listening to the podcast, uh, make sure to tune in to Hangover Time, our Miami Heat post game show, live here on Twitch and on YouTube. Uh, we're alternating one day Twitch, one day YouTube. Uh, tomorrow's after the game, Alf is going to be here hosting twitch.tv slash MI Heat Beat right at the buzzer of the game. So make sure to be here. We're going to tweet out a link and keep you guys informed. But after every game, Alf's hosting uh, our post game show, Hangover Time. We're going to get branding for you and everything. Exciting. Load up Twitch, the uh, the app with five minutes left in the game. That's how that's how you're gonna be on time. Thanks oh, to Tone okay. for subbing. So Yo, tier one sub. To tone. tone is a uh, Tone is OG he Twitter. We appreciate you. Uh, W's in the chat. You're the best man. Thank you so much. All right, so we're not gonna do a long pod today. We're gonna do a yeah. You are hip with with getting Twitch. Listen, if, I know that he Twitter is not maybe uh with the times with the Twitch stuff. I know it's kind of new to you guys. Uh, if you're a pod listener, uh, come by stream. We're gonna stream every podcast. So come check us out. See how fun this is. We're having a lot of fun with the streams and everything. Obviously, we're gonna upload to the pods always. Uh, the pod feed is is first and foremost. But we're doing kind of the stuff on the side to kind of grow our platform a bit. Uh, so kind of wanted to, we're not, we're not going to do too much today, but there's a couple things I thought were interesting, kind of exiting preseason and entering the regular season. I kind of came up with an 11 man rotation that I feel like are going to play games, right? Like the heat have a lot of depth. And I think for a season in which we're going to have a lot of, uh, maybe injury, or maybe there might be players taking time off for COVID. I think that depth is going to be important. So, Alf, I want I kind of want to start with you, get right into this. I have my 11 guys that I think are just like solidly going to play this regular season are Tyler, Goron, Duncan, Avery Bradley, Jimmy Butler, Andre Iguodala, Mo Harkless, KZ Akpala, Bam, Precious, and Olenek. That leaves Kendrick Nunn, Strout, Struss, and Myers, who are like kind of fringe rotation players with kind of Vincent, Udonis, and, and Silva just like on the total outs. Do you think that those three guys can break the? I don't know. How do you feel about that? I mean, I I, I agree with you just from like a talent of what we've seen in the preseason at the end of last season standpoint. But we've also seen Spo um, <laughs> go to none a lot, um, <laughs> even when we as a fan base probably feel like he shouldn't. So I don't I don't really count none out just yet, right? I think there's uh, I think he can play his way right into the rotation. I think there's going to be guys like who knows uh, Mo Harkless. We haven't seen much from him. Max Struss looks like he should get minutes. I mean, Strew Struss. I'm sorry, uh, whatever his name is. Uh, he looks <laughs> like he should get minutes after the last game. You know, but that's only one preseason game, so it's it's tough right now. But I I agree with you. If it was up to me, that would probably be my 11 man rotation that you just named. Um, but we've seen Spo do things that, you know, out of the ordinary. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if Casey Akpala just doesn't play much for some reason. Like, that's just a Spo thing. You never know. So uh, I agree with you, but who knows, right? It, 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 we're, it's, it's kind of with Spo, you just, you know, like Nash rolled out the same starting lineup uh, for his first game of the season with the Nets that he's been playing in the preseason. That's not something Spo is going to do. All, you know, that's Spo is just, you know, he's hard to predict. 
we were talking like in the chat, like, well, who's, you know, our friend Leif of Five on the Floor brought up like, who's starting at the four? And I'm like, I think Harkless, but like, I think KZ probably deserves it. And we've talked a lot about this, but I just kind of think that that lends to like the questions on the depth that we have. Like, I think the Nun stuff, uh, Jack, is pretty interesting because like, I don't know if he's going to like, they have four guards that I think are going to play ahead of them and Tyler and Duncan and Goron and in um, Avery Bradley. I don't really know where Kendrick Nunn, like chat saying that Kendrick Nunn is kind of Goran insurance, which I agree with. But I think like as a regular in the rotation, I think it's just hard for me to see. Cause like they brought Avery Bradley for a reason, like unless he just straight up sucks. Like I think that they brought him here to play. I, yeah, I kind of disagree with you on this. And we talked about it a little bit earlier. Um, I think Kendrick Nunn is going to have no problem finding playing time this regular season if he's like back to some level of competence obviously if he played like he did right after he got covid there's no chance he's gonna play but i mean i think they're gonna want to save goron for the playoffs i really do not think avery bradley is a reliable presence in the regular season he just has not been for the past couple years of his career um i don't know like when's the last time he played 70 games 60 games like I just don't see him as a regular presence in the regular season. Maybe we'll see. He also didn't look that great in the preseason. But again, he straight again, up all awful. preseason. He looked really bad. But again, with all of these questions about like, whether Struz deserves to play or whether KZ deserves to play, is like we got such a small sample of these guys. We got no summer league. So like we would have gotten to see like a lot more Struz if we got a longer preseason. Um, if we got a summer league or something like that. And I, I just don't know what to expect from any of it. Like, we don't know how these guys look in practice. My gut says Harkless is going to start the first night. Um, I think Kate um, Kendrick Nunn is going to be fine finding minutes. I just don't think they're going to push Goron too well, there's gonna Obviously, be Goron is their point guard. There's going to be minutes for everybody because Mo Harkless is going to foul out in the second quarter. So. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> How do you fall out of a preseason game? Like I, 11, like, I, fouls in like 18 minutes of preseason. It's amazing. It has to be a record. Oh, so I got that. mad at me because like I tweeted. I'm like, yo, when are we allowed to be concerned about Mo Harkless? Because like he looks bad. And I Sedano is yelling at me on Twitter. Like, how dare I question veteran Mo Harkless? Well, no, the, the funny thing about you questioning Mo Harkless is you opined <laughs> For yep. Mo Harkless all last season, like you could not believe that he did not keep him in that trade when he was never going to be kept in the trade. Like it, it made absolutely no sense. You were the biggest Mo Harkless stand last year, and now you're bashing him on Twitter. You deserved it. Good job, Sedano. <laughs> yeah, I re- like. I was like so mad that they gave up a first round pick to dump him. I was like, Mo Harkless is good. They kept Myers Leonard, and uh, Myers turned out to be like actually pretty fucking solid last season. So. I mean, egg on my face, but Sedano, upcoming guest on Hangover Time. Oh, confirmed. Uh, I mean, at some point, I don't know when. That's it. Listen, George, George, George is a friend of the show. Uh, we have a uh, imagine me of- drunk yelling at Sedano. That's going to be really good. You do it sober. You've done it sober I mean, on the pod. I'd imagine me drunk yelling at him. It's going to be great. <laughs> uh, nothing like hot take Harry back in the day yelling at Sedano. That was the best for for OG <laughs> fans. Um, Har- so is that your name, Harrison? <laughs> <laughs> Sedano pretending, yo, Sedano pretending like he's big time. He doesn't know us and follow us. We know, we see you, George. Hollywood, George, George. Hollywood, George. George is such a sellout. Um, I like looking, looking kind of to the start of the season against Orlando, and 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 like I, I, I want to see if like they get Struce a little, a little time. So Alf, we talk so much shit on Max Struce. Nikias uh, tweeted at some point in the first half of the game one against the Pelicans when. Uh, around halftime, Nikaya said he is one of the worst NBA players I've ever seen in my life. Since then, he's been on a Hall of Fame trajectory. Uh, <laughs> we on Hangover Time just totally fucking made fun of him. We called him so many names. Uh, we said that Giannis signed the extension because Max Ruse saw him play and said, I don't want to be a part of that. That's how bad he looked that game. And now he's like, we're talking about him as a rotation player. What the fuck are we doing? Um, we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. And that's the things I like people to re- to remind people at all times. Like, none of us know shit, especially about players we've never seen before, which is why I always think it's funny when people get all crazy about uh, draft picks. Like, we, we saw one game of Max Struess, and I was ready to get – I was going to call uh, the State Department and have him deported. 
Um, I don't know where he's from, but he was going back Germany <laughs> or, or right, whatever. And now I'm all like, I am like 100% on the Struss bus, the Struss caboose, whatever you want to call it. Struss Ooh, caboose. I like that one. I it's like the Struss caboose. Weird. Yeah, I don't know. He's he was born, by the way, in Hickory Hills, Illinois. It's almost like the culture. Wait, Max Struess is wait, Max Struess isn't German? <laughs> no, he's Hickory Hills, Illinois. Why 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 okay. did we deport him? There's no way he's a he's not an American, is he? He went to he went to DePaul. His head is shaped like someone from the Eastern Bloc. <laughs> What's right? that supposed to be? <laughs> is that is is that racist? I don't know. He's thick. He's like thick. I thought he was power forward when I first saw him play. He's a big dude. Honestly, I'm all I'm all I'm on a Struis caboose or whatever. I like him. I, I'm a fan. I think I'm I think in. I'm in. After after we deported him, I, he's been great. Maybe he responds to that. Uh, I, and his maybe. size is. And, and you talk about his size, Jack. Like it's actually pretty interesting. A guy that big, like he's a big dude. Like he's not going to get tossed around. You know, you might. You're not going to have some of the same concerns you had with you know some of the you know some some of the slider guys slider shooters that we've seen in the past like Wayne Ellington or even Tyler Hero like he's a big solid dude so hopefully if you know I really haven't paid much attention to his defense because like I mean he's been he's been all world offensively but if his defense is at least you know Duncan (laughs) Robinson Tyler Hero uh please be above Kendrick Nunn level (laughs) <laughs> I mean, and he can shoot and, and do some of the things that we've seen him do. Like, that's a rotation player. Well, we got to see um, what the shooting looks like. I mean, KZ shot lights out. And then I think he made 11 threes in the G League all last year. So yeah. it's just kind of hard to predict. Like, anybody can make six threes in a game. I'm not saying I'm not impressed by either of them. I'm excited about Struess. He looked good, but yeah. But it's one like- preseason game. But what you can say about both Struess and Akpala is that they've shown these flashes in college. Um, now that now that he had a good game, I actually learned a little bit about Struess. I still didn't know he was American, so I didn't really I mean, we do all my learned. research. <laughs> he looks kind of like Cuban. You said Eastern Bloc. He looks like a Cuban frat boy. Ah, uh, no, he looks uh, he looks like he fought in the Civil War. Didn't you call um, him the, the lead <laughs> villain character on The Sound of Music? Yeah, he. I, I, yeah, I did say he looked like a villain on The Sound of Music, which is is vaguely racist. Um, the lead villain in Sound of Music is Hitler. That's, yeah. Wait, what? So, <laughs> so you see where I, you see where I was going with <laughs> what, that. What, 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 that that that's a concern. Um, I didn't know that. That's who the lead villain is. Poor it's Max about Struth. the Nazis. He's the main villain. But yeah, now he's a Hall of Famer. Like Hitler. Listen, he he's on preseason Gerald Green pace of shooting you know we we love that here first ballot hall of famer preseason gerald green he's struce is a guy like the heat love those and i don't even think like struce will be the last like if, they'll find guys like him like look what they did with wayne ellington like these kind of shooters that relocate and run around a lot and and like love to shoot off catch and shoots and handoffs and like look they did it with wayne they did it with duncan and now they found another guy in struce that looks at the bare minimum like he's a, just a fucking good shooter i don't know if he could do anything else I think he could shoot. I'm pretty confident. Did you see him that he dunk could shoot. last game? I mean, I, I couldn't believe that. I couldn't three believe levels, that. Three level score. <laughs> put his jersey up in the rafters. I mean, just an absolute steal. He's gonna love Houston. People, yeah. People forget. People forget Josh Richardson. Even like second round pick. Like obviously a great pick, but like the shooting kind of came out of nowhere. His senior year at Tennessee, and he was not projected as like necessarily this great three and D guy. And it wasn't till late in his first season. There's a great story about how Spo really pushed him to practice his threes. He was able to evaluate great. his form. He was historically yeah. great for a few weeks. Like historically great as a rookie was shooting. He's at 60% Tyler Johnson first as well. Do you remember Tyler Johnson like- was a huge like looking at their shooting form, just projecting really well, um finding the sleeper shooter. So they've I mean, got they so good have a knack for that. Yeah. yeah. I'm never gonna doubt like I, I I the precious pick I almost doubted them and I Alf made Alf made so much fun of me when I was like I don't really like the vision of them getting a big and Alf was like are you fucking stupid and I was like you know what Alf you're so I'm not gonna doubt them anymore like what the fuck am I doing I don't know Nikias did it. what am I doing Nikias did it again this year I know I know and, and he, I was like dude when are we gonna learn come on like there were people that wanted TJ Leaf you know what I mean is he even in the league <laughs> He's available. 
Then why do we no. give Bam an extension if TJ Leaf is around? That's right. Who did we want that draft? Was it um I wanted OG and an OB. Which would not no, have been yeah, a bad yeah, It was OG. Uh, for OG, the band yeah. draft, for, we wanted Donovan Mitchell. No, yeah, we wanted Mitchell. Oh, but, but that, no. I mean, he wasn't available. So it doesn't matter. What was the, and the last year was the Romeo Langford draft, and you were obsessed with Romeo Langford. I really like Romeo Langford. Um, I liked you PJ wrong. Washington a lot, too. I think PJ Washington would have been a really good pick. Uh, Obviously, geez, Tyler Hero is the right choice. He's thinking about Siku, Dumbuya. Dim, oh, yeah, no, yeah, Seku Seku would have been Seku great was the too. other guy. Yeah, Seku. Yeah, we're I wrong. I still yeah. like Seku, but like Hero is really good. I was wrong about Hero. I don't think I was wrong about Seku. I still think he was going to be good. And I think PJ Washington looks really good with the Hornets. Um, PJ Washington. But yeah, I was dead wrong about Tyler Hero. Tyler, Nobody's Tyler ever might been be as wrong at anything. Yeah. Is Tyler going to be the third best player from that draft? Yeah, is he already? He's going to be top second five. best right now. He's, I mean, like, he's gonna I mean, yeah, I think Zion and, 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 and. Oh, no, John. yeah, that's right. John Morant. Okay, he's third. John Morant's really good. There's, I want There's a lot of talent. I think I'm saying the Nets look really good. good right now. Yeah, they I do. wouldn't so, know. I can't watch it again because I'm doing this. It's, so I, it's five minutes into the first quarter. Like, calm down. So, the, I, I, funny, I was like staring at the TV. I, you know, I've been, I, I went on a podcast a little bit earlier and I was talking about the Nets. Traitor. And the heat and like, huh? Yeah. What the hell? Traitor. What are you talking about? I'm guess. saying Cam Reddish. Get out of here with Cam Reddish. I wanted him too, but no, he ain't. <laughs> You he's guys far, have met. He's not even a starter on the on the freaking Hawks right now. So yeah, he you can't put him up there. Hold on, I want I yeah, want to give these kids a shout out. They're they're <laughs> Northeastern University students. Uh, they do a good show. I was on. Be on the lookout for them. It's called Tom and Dave. Uh, they they just started the pod. I went on and they were asking me like, what matchup concerns you for the Heat? And I was like, theoretically, I think the Nets kind of scare me because they have like I think still think their their biggest weakness is their point of attack defense. Uh, I mean they they managed to overcome that in the playoffs so i'm not like too concerned but if i had to pick a weakness it'd be that and then you know durant's obviously a freak at the power forward spot and like they don't you know jay crowder's not here i don't know how mo harkless is going to look doing guarding to kd you know you kind of hope kz takes that role you don't want bam to do a full time so like i kind of look at that matchup theoretically and i was like that that could look bad that could look bad he beat his only podcast yes so no, yeah, the could, Nets it, are up 23 to 9 right now, and both Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving have combined for 20 points of those 23 points. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, they're, those, those two guys are, are good at basketball. Yeah, but there's, Probably, a, there's, yeah. there's what I call a weirdo factor when it comes to the Nets. Like, there's weird shit that could happen with that locker room and that team. So I just don't trust them yet. And I'm not calling Kyrie a weirdo. And honestly, he is a weirdo, but not like a bad weirdo. Like, I. We, we're all weird. I mean, Jack bought a dollar suit today and, and wore it on a live stream, right? You it looks, know, it looks I, pretty good that you paid a dollar for it, trust. It only yeah, looks I, okay on Zoom if if I'm walking around. It's not wearable. Do you, for for Do you want to stand up for the camera? Do you want to stand up for the I'm not going to stand up for the camera. Why don't you stand up? I, I bought it for a Zoom interview. It's way too big. It's like a talking heads, like, stop making sense, <laughs> stop size suit. You may ask yourself. It's, yeah. <laughs> This is not my beautiful suit. Why do we think Max Juice is from Germany? Did he play in Germany or something? No, Struce. he played at DePaul. No, but he's not. I mean, he's not a. He's not like a twenty-two-year-old, right? He's like thirty-eight or something. Max Struess is twenty-four years old. No, That's yep. he's at least thirty-two. Yep, born in. I feel like he played with. I feel like he mentored Goran in Slovenia. Okay, he played <laughs> in two thousand nineteen for the Bulls in their G League team windy city bulls and then uh he tore his acl and now he's with the heat uh played at at lewis college you lewis university and then depaul uh, where he played his collegiate career and uh he went to high school in illinois palos hills he spent some time in germany <laughs> what? i can't like there's, there's no way how did this happen like you talked about deporting him and i just totally was like yeah he's he's German. I don't know why. Where did I get this from? I don't know. I just totally believed you, and I rode with that. Why would anybody trust my Max? I don't know. You just said it with such authority. Uh, That's you had such conviction. I feel like he was like, um, Goran Drag just shooting coach when he was in middle school. Like he looks older than Goran. (laughs) He does. Goran looks kind of like a baby sometimes, though. 
But I love that Rohan story here. that he shared with us on the podcast. That Rohan. Wait, can I even highlight a comment real quick? Yes. Someone said that Jack's coat looks like it's made of 100% rat ass. I got to explain. A, I got to explain why I it's a dollar. I didn't see that. That's a really good. That's a good uh, Chappelle show. Okay. The store is going out of business and it doesn't have buttons. That's why it's a dollar. <laughs> it's it's like legit. It's it's fine material wise. It's just not a uh-huh. wearable suit. I needed something for a Zoom interview. And this is my Zoom suit now. Do you think I, I think <laughs> I think that's I mean, look, it's an ugly suit that may lose you the job. Yeah. I mean, I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, who cares? <laughs> Listen, ah, whatever. They asked for it and I did it. You know, what, what it wasn't the kind of job where I'm going to buy a $30 suit for. I'm not spending a oh, $30 yeah. suit. Is it corduroy? Uh, that looks like it's corduroy. It is corduroy. It's comfortable. It's 100% rat ass, according to Tick Tick Boom. It's oh, Tick Boom also says rat ass. that code is the reason the store went out of business. <laughs> they sold nothing but that right. coat. <laughs> And that shirt Harry wore. Uh, to the, to the, we got to do that combination, Jack. You got to get the Harry shirt with the suit. Oh, God. I'm going to screenshot this and send it to Brass for uh, Photoshopping. No, it's just ask. Harry has to have the shirt. Ask him to mail it to you. Are we still talking about James Harden at all? Or can we at least talk? What I would like to talk about and is... There is the, news that we didn't get to talk about from our well, last... Well, report, the reporting around it and, and how people are getting upset. Like, that's yeah, interesting. I actually want to get to that. Yeah. Like it, I, I thought you had a great tweet thread on it. Yeah, it's just it's kind of insane to me. It's like people don't know what reporting is. And listen, there are other things surrounding it, like the way that people are responding to some of the criticism that I understand. But at the end of the day, a report saying that the Heat are interested in James Harden. Is you can't go back afterwards when the Heat don't get James Harden and say the report was wrong. I could I could, I'm interested in a lot of shit. I'm interested in a new Lexus. I may not get the Lexus, but if you report that I'm interested in a Lexus, that is a correct and accurate report. So there are people out there and I really like, you know, I, I, I go hard for this stuff because people go after my man Leif and that bothers me. I'm still friends with Ethan. People are going after Clutch Adam, all these guys over at Five Reasons and other people, you know, that are reporting this stuff and that I know, I know for a fact that they have real sources that are telling them real information. And if those sources are telling them that the Heat want James Harden, but they're not willing to give up Duncan Robinson or the price is too high and they don't get it's James seven Harden. players that they are asked for. It's, it's plus picks. accurate information. Like everyone needs to stop. None, Clutch, Leif, uh, Ethan, who all, even Ash Nicole, who people are attacking her. <laughs> They, they never they never guaranteed that the Heat were getting James Harden. The only thing they told you is that the Heat are interested in James Harden. And if Barry and Ira and Tim Reynolds and all these people who are just mouthpieces for the organization come out and say that the Heat are no longer interested, you know what that is? It's a confirmation of the other guy's report. So, like, everyone needs to chill. Like, Keyword is no rumors, longer. Huh? Keyword is no longer. Yeah, if they are no longer, that means they weren't interested. That means the reports were accurate. Like everybody needs to chill. People get so amped up and they get in their feelings when your team doesn't get the free agent you want. Like that doesn't mean the reporting was wrong. Like learn the difference between a prediction, a guarantee, and a report. There has not been a single guarantee out there that James Harden would play for the Miami Heat or Giannis for that matter. This is just how trade negotiations work. Like, Literally every time there's reporting on a trade negotiation, this is how it works. Because the thing about reporting is you have an infinite number of sources from an infinite number of sides. You had somebody in Houston reporting that Toronto and um, Boston were the front runners in the Houston trade. And I truly believe that somebody in the Houston organization probably told him that. Or an agent. Lie? Maybe. Yeah, or maybe an agent. an agent. That's just how these things work. There's like an infinite number of truths. And maybe some of them don't pan out. And especially when you're talking about interest in a negotiation, like, I don't know. Like, to me, the Barry and Ira reports didn't even necessarily conflict with what Ethan and Adam at all reported. (laughs) It is a confirmation of their report, in fact. (laughs) And, and, like, let's let's also understand that, like... Let the Heat organization never actually, like, said anything to correct 
Ethan at all. And that's something that they mentioned on their live stream yesterday, which I did pay attention to. Like, they didn't confirm nor deny what they were saying. They didn't, they didn't say that they were going down the wrong path, which basically is just a, a, one way of them saying, yeah, you guys are pretty much right on your reporting, but we keep, we're not going to tell you that. But if you're going down the wrong path, they pretty probably also, would. And if you're a Heat fan and you've been complaining that the price is too high, and then now the Heat are agreeing with you that the price is too high, and you're rubbing it in the face of the people that were reporting that the Heat were after Harden, what are you, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, do you want the information or not? That's the part I never understand as a Heat fan. Like, I want the information. Give me all the rumors. I love this stuff. You know what I mean? Like, the more you sit there and attack the people that are giving you the information because it doesn't pan out the way you want it to pan out because you're in your own feelings, like, you are just going to dissuade them from coming from the next time around. Like, why would Clutch Adam want to do this again? And I know he's going to do it. You know what I mean? Because he this this is this is what he wants to do. But why would he want to do this again? Because the way he, the way he fans are acting, it's like it is a think, and that's what reporting is. And Jack, I think you said it in the chat last night. Reporting is a thankless, thankless job. But like people don't have to be dicks about this stuff. Well, apparently, he's getting threats in his DMs and shit, which is fucked up. Threats. My bad, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, no, were you dude, threatening I'll... Adam? <laughs> um. <laughs> Um, I still might get a call back on that interview, so play the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> Alf, you made a great point, like, and especially like when you talked to you, kind of use the analogy of like, you know, you're interested in a house, and just because you don't close on the house, does it mean that you didn't almost close on the house, or that I wasn't and, interested in the first place? Yeah, it's like crazy, and, and like that's, and you know, I think we know that a lot of stuff that we know or that Leif knows or Adam knows doesn't get reported, right? Like they are very selective with what they put out there. They're not, I think, you know, and and if you look at what the Herald is doing and, and the, and the Sutton Sentinel, right? Obviously Barry and I and Ira and, and, um, and Anthony are all very good reporters who are very responsible. And, and the organization knows that and the organization sent a statement through them. Cause they all said it. They all said the same thing, right? Which makes me think that, you know, they got an email on company letterhead saying something, and they all threw out the same report, which was an interesting strategy by the Heat. It wasn't like they tried to leak it to Barry only or I don't know. Everybody got it, right? They all reported the same thing at the same time, which is interesting to me. It was, uh, it was, it was a mass email. It was a it mass email on Letterhead, that. which and because they know that, you know, Barry and Anthony and Ira are all very respected, responsible journals. Like, we're going to throw this out and this will be taken as fact. When people aren't taking what Ethan Skolnick says as fact, when the the dude is fucking Teflon in this industry. Do you guys not remember when Dwayne was leaving, how we all hung on every word that he said every waking moment, listening to his radio show for any update on Dwayne? Bro, he was that guy's, DMing Dwayne Wade, getting his information. That guy's information's good. That guy, that well, just like uh, Levitar was basically texting Pat Riley. Like, why are we At doubting At the same time, people? and they were dueling. I just want to say thanks yeah. to Strone03. Uh, yeah, the prime sub. for uh, subscribing. He subscribed through his uh, Amazon Prime account, which everybody can do. By the way, it's free. Uh, he you also, get one uh, free subscription. He, he messaged saying Ethan looks like he eats rocks. <laughs> that even me? <laughs> you know that pod? Do that. If, if that, that clutch Adam pod from yesterday killed me with with Alex. And, yeah, they said uh, Ethan Mace windowed me. <laughs> which is racist because he's like the only black Jedi. Oh, only black Jedi. Ethan yeah. leaked the Ten Commandments. I that was funny. I thought was really I listen, I I'm a I'm a Star Wars prequel apologist. I like them. Episode three is my favorite Star Wars movie. Alf who likes Star Wars probably hates that take. I'm not a big Star probably Wars. Probably the best fan. prequel. Oh, I I, I no, took you not, as a Star a Wars guy. I, I just is, I've been consuming a ton of Star Wars content. Like I like the original uh the original three. I like yeah. Rogue Rogue One is my favorite outside the original three. And I'm starting to like get into the um the the, uh, series, yeah. Like I think Thank that, you, uh, JLL Man Gaming. And Man tier one sub. Oh, tier one. Oh, good job, JLL. Shout out um, to JLL. Mandalorian is actually pretty dope, but that and one, one the last thing I'm going to say about the whole sources thing because honestly, I've been battling, I've been fighting this battle on Twitter, um, and you know, I left five reasons, and it's not through any beef. If if you think it's beef, why would I be defending these guys the last two days? But I will tell you, and uh, compared to some other people, those three guys, Leif, Adam, and Ethan, they double check and they talk to each other 
and they cross reference sources before they come out re- with with a report. It's not them pulling crap out of their ass. Believe me, it's not coming okay. from just one source. No, it's du- they double source everything. They get the information from one source and then they bring it up to another. So this is what reporting basically is. And I went to journalism school. You get your source to give you information, and then you kind of try to find two other sources to confirm that information. So you have three sources on the record saying yes, that's legit, and then you report that. How do you like taxes. Yep. Someone said, how do I transfer my ALF donation yeah. for five reasons to MHB? Is there paperwork? Tick, tick, boom, I'll send you an email. <laughs> we'll send, send, send you an invoice. Send, yeah. me his, uh, send me your Venmo account. <laughs> remember, <laughs> remember chat, remember listeners, we worked with Leif for well, like five years, and we also worked with Ethan for a few of those. We know how the sausage is made, and uh, people aren't pulling shit out of their ass. Like, oh, yeah, those text strings are awesome. Those like are that Jimmy Butler trade saga? Legit the best. Yeah, that's fun. And you learn how negotiations happen in real time. Just like people need to chill out and just learn to have fun. Like, just don't like. And I, I, by the way, I believe that Riley said, fuck you to Houston and said, hey, you want to be like, just like he did to Tom Thibodeau. Call me back when you want to be serious, because, you know, gutting the team, yeah. literally every rotation player you have for James Harden isn't negotiations by Houston. You're just you're fucking doing a ransom. That's not how this works. You want to know what's Yeah. Somebody four or five six says, if you can read the tea leaves and understand the Heat's front office and how they operate, you know that what they've been saying is legit, which is Absolutely. exactly right. Um, my favorite comment so far in the chat is that I didn't. The guy says I, I can't. I can't find it, but he said he didn't want Harden. But now that he's watching the Nets, he's like, "Fuck it, we need Harden." Uh, oh, <laughs> Ninjared, Ninjared underscore CJ. Yeah, yeah the, 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 I did Harden, but my God, the Nets are scary as fuck. We need him. Yeah, the the uh, the Nets just dropped forty points in the first quarter. But you They're know, it's okay. Mo Harkless got this. Yeah, exactly. Mo, as Sedano told me, Mo Harkless is gonna be fine. Exactly. Who needs a top five player? When fuck you have that. We got Mo Harkless, baby. Mo Harkless. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for coming to stream. Thank you so much to Alf and Jack for making the time. I know it's late over there in Spain, and we all kind of did this on short notice. Tomorrow, remember, post-game show, hangover time. Be there as soon as the buzzer sounds. We have a special Twitch. guest. Uh, we have a special guest. I'll announce it tomorrow. I don't know if it's that big of a deal, but it's, it's somebody it's that... It's a big all, deal. I think it's, it's somebody that all you guys like. I mean, it's impossible not to like the guy. Um, we're going to try to have a special guest at least once a week, somebody outside of the heat beat universe. Um, we'll have Tiffany, uh, like Tiffany. the Marvel cinematic universe. Exactly. Uh, it'll be me, Tiffany Meeks, uh, Solana. And, uh, who else? Alex. I, I can't say his last name. Moosey by Moosey I call him muscle baby in the, uh, is baby. Is baby. Is moose now. Just call him moose. Just call him. Yeah. Moose. Okay. So it'll be call moose, him. Solana, me, Tiffany Meeks, and a special guest. And then next week, we're going to have Siobhan back on the show. You guys love Siobhan. And her first uh, premiere show in the second preseason game. So we'll have her back. Uh, like I said, we're looking at guys like Sedano, Izzy Gutierrez, Mike Ryan, um, Evan Cohen. We're going to have a lot of special guests for you on Hangover Time. So check us out. Alf books better than we do, Brian. We got to step up. I got, got Salmon Hill. To... What, what is, what is, what is Alf <laughs> done better than Salmon Hill? What have you done for us lately? I will wait. What have you done for us lately, Hill? Brian? I've got one thing to plug. It's not me, but um, I just listened before this pod because I thought I could steal from con- some content um, to the Locked on Heat. They had an interview with Kelly Olenek. It was pretty good. It was really interesting hearing about like the Heat's bubble situation. Um, I think if you're interested in hearing from Kelly Olenek, give it a listen. David tried and to trade support. me away to Raptors Twitter today. I don't, I don't want to hear anything from David. Dead to me. Support, Dead to support me. David Ramil, even though he looks like a serial killer. I got something else to plug. <laughs> I was going to end the too. show on that, Brian, and you ruined it. I what said you that to plug? his face numerous times, by the way. Yeah, Barry <laughs> Jackson tweeted yesterday, which I only think, why, why did we yesterday. talk about this? He said that Barry the executive... Barry Jackson tweeted that Rama looks like a serial killer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just end the show.